In today's video, we're going to explore the province of Pechaburi. It may not be number one on your list of places to visit in Thailand, but there are some interesting things here, such as beautiful reservoir lakes and a unique shrine cave. Let's do it. I'm Joe Perilla. Join me as I travel from Bangkok to this place, the most southern point in Thailand. So if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below and follow me on this journey as we discover the south of Thailand. I was just riding past and I saw this. Another quarry slash reservoir. And it just made me think, yeah, not very pretty, but give it a few months, a couple of people coming here and it will be called the uh, Pechaburi Grand Canyon. Every province will have one. Almost as disappointing as the Ratchaburi Grand Canyon that we saw a couple of videos ago. Anyway, <laughs> just thought that would be funny. But I've just turned off the main road and hopefully onto some nicer roads towards this lake. Hopefully it's a bit prettier than this one, to be honest. I mean, the water's quite a cool colour, but uh, yeah, this wasn't even on Google Maps. <laughs> I was just riding past and thought, hey, there's a Grand Canyon. But no. Anyway, on we go. All right, we made it to the Kenkrachan National Park. And I didn't turn the camera on before because, well, the road wasn't very pretty at all. And the, this is where the lake sits, Kenkrachan Lake. And I've come to a part of it called Kenkrachan Dam. I don't actually know if it's going to be pretty. I just saw the word Kenkrachan Dam, or dam, and thought maybe it'll be a nice view. So we're just coming up to it now. If it is pretty, we'll stop. If it's not pretty, we'll carry on to another part of the lake. But we should know. Well, I'd say it's quite nice. In fact, I'd say it's very nice. Ah, oh, much nicer than the ride here, I must admit. Look at that, guys. And of course, as anywhere in Thailand, it's a good photo spot. <laughs> everyone out taking their selfies over the lake. Oh, it's, it is pretty. It's really cab. Meow cab. Cab. It's asking me if I want a boat. I think for 500 baht you can take a boat. It's very pretty. Get the other camera out. I'll show you properly. Mail cap. Top on cap. No, it's okay. Cap. Just have a look. Cap. Okay, Kenkrachan Dam. And I presume this is the reservoir behind or the lake. And. Yeah, it's quite pretty. You have the rolling hills in the background, actually flanking the whole skyline, you have the rolling hills, and it looks like they go on. They have that blue tint to them, which is always nice to see. And you can see one of them here, actually, you've got a bigger one here. You can, as I say, go on the lake. I think it's 500 baht to take a boat onto the lake, but it looks like no one is doing it, actually. But these guys ride up and down the dam, asking on their motorbike. And uh, yeah, meow cap, I don't want it, thanks. Or a polite way of saying no thank you. And then on the other side, you have a little reservoir that we rode past and full of lilies. Another pretty thing. I don't think I'll take everything off. I don't think I'll stay too long. I'm going to continue to drive around the lake, see if there are any more pretty viewpoints. I thought she was going to ask me another one for the third time, asking me if I want a boat trip. <laughs> but to be fair, they need to, they need to give their sales pitch. Right. I'm going to try and fly the drone. It's a little bit breezy up here, actually. Hopefully not too breezy for the drone, so we can get a better look of this lake. Uh, anything looks better when you get in the sky. 
with the drone. It's one of my best purchases, I would say. I think it really adds something different to the videos. You get a much better perspective of those blue-tinted rolling mountains. I mean, to be honest, from where I'm stood, it's not the most beautiful sight. It's pretty, of course. It's not the best sight I've ever seen, but when you look at it through this, wouldn't it be amazing if we could all fly and have this view? <laughs> I haven't been drinking, I promise. <clears throat> all right, drone away. Let's carry on. I don't think this place is gonna set any records for being the most beautiful place. But actually, when you get the drone up, you see that these are islands in the lake. And it is quite beautiful in its own way. But to be honest, sometimes it's just nice to be on the bike and out exploring. It doesn't necessarily need to be the most beautiful place going. But we'll ride a little around this lake, see if there are any more beautiful spots, as this car doesn't know what he's doing. Reverse lights on and indicating at the same time. Yeah, we'll see if there's anywhere else to get a good viewpoint. Well, I was just riding back to Pechaburi, the town, and I rode through a place called Cha'an. And I've just come to this harbour area. I thought it was quite cool to see the fishing boats. I mean, look at them. Can you imagine spending days at a time on places like that? Or a boat like that, should I say? Uh, but yeah. Quite cool. Finally, smell the sea. I tell you what, smelling the salt water for the first time is uh, it was pretty nice. Reminded me of being at home on the little island. But actually, some of these are quite pretty with their colours. But there's loads of them, loads of fishing boats. Fishing, obviously, big business around here. I just thought I'd stop off and show you. Actually, this is the one that's probably most worse for wear, to be honest. And the fishermen are just chilling, waiting, I guess waiting to go out next. Chilling in hammocks. As you come further down, there's even smaller little fishing boats. It's quite a cool area, Cha Am. I mean, it's a beautiful beach. With the coconut trees in the background over here. Nice golden sand and a very long beach all the way down to Hua Hin. In fact, I think they call this Hua Hin Cha Am. But uh, yeah, Hua Hin is, is, further, is further down. But I was just riding back through. To be honest, riding around this province, it's, been, it's not been a struggle, but it's, it's not been the most beautiful riding, I must say. I tried to stop at the interesting places. But just seeing the way these guys are just preparing, they've got the nets out. And uh, yeah, getting ready for their next trip out to sea. It's quite cool. Now it's broken out into a little market. This harbour, harbour area. Pretty cool. Let's go through. This is more of what they want. Nice local experiences. You can see selling all of the seafood. Obviously, seafood in this province is a big thing. Well, in all of the south, seafood is a big thing. But uh, live crabs. Lots of people are kind of in everyone's way, to be honest. But I'm being lazy and don't really want to get off the bike. You can't get through there, so it looks like I'm going to have to turn around and find another road. So I look, look like a very stupid Ferran. Anyway, you've got cockles, squid, clams, crabs, all sorts of things. I'm not a tourist in sight. That's why even if you are, even if the roads are a bit of a challenge, not the roads, but finding things is a bit of a challenge, persevere and you get cool little experiences like that. Anyway. It is Tam Kau Luang Cave and yeah, it doesn't really look like a cave here, right? To get there, you need to park in a temple called Wat Ban Tawi. Parking is free. You then buy your ticket, 25 baht, to go up and come down, including the entrance, and you get shuffled up and back. So we're gonna do that, or I'm gonna do that, and I'll see you guys at the top.
right, got the ticket. It is 25 baht, which looks like 10 baht for the cave and 15 baht for the uh, little taxi. I'm not entirely sure why we can't drive up. I mean, it was like 30 seconds max, but I guess it's to do with parking. If this cave gets busy, there's no parking area. Anyway, it's not really a problem at 25 baht total. Uh, although the little taxi really struggled on the hill. So imagine if there were more than just me in there, I think it would really struggle. Anyway, let's go. I think you have to walk to the cave. Right, I guess this is the entrance into the cave. Oh wow, you can already smell the bat stuff. <laughs> And this cave is about 100 years old. I mean, it's obviously much older than 100 years old, but it's been open for about 100 years in the reign of King Rama IV. And actually it was a favorite place of his when he was in this area as a monk. So that's one reason why it's quite special, but also it's a shrine cave. So it's a spiritual place that, uh, I can, <laughs> let's use the word shrine. Shrines have been added in there. That's the second part of why it's special. Shrine caves are always quite beautiful to see. And the third part, well, let's save that bit for a surprise. Straight away you come into this vast cavernous area with statues of Buddha and little chedis and a monk actually over here, all around. It does feel different to the other caves I've been into with this amount of statues here, it is beautiful. And we've come a little early, I think, but hopefully as the sun starts to come round, you get a beam of light from this opening down into the cave, but let's wait and see if that happens. It's not happening yet. Doesn't mean it won't. So you begin to see why it is a shrine cave or how it is used as a shrine cave. And you start to see the stalactites falling, or well, not falling, but hanging off the ceiling. These statues of Buddha, especially the gold statue, or to be honest, any statue of Buddha, white, gold, they're always beautiful. I mean, a lot of them do look very similar, and you see many of them, but they always have their own charm and their own beauty, especially in this, well, you have human, oh, godly versus nature. <laughs> I thought, I can hear talking, the monk is obviously doing some praying. Uh, and then I look over and know the monk is on the phone, <laughs> on the mobile. <laughs> Even the monks use modern technology, but it always makes me laugh whenever I see it. And other than the monk, I have this entire place to myself. This one, I just thought it, well, I didn't really think about it, but now I look closer at it, it is a huge, huge pillar, which has some amazing, uh, well, holes in it, I guess, where they've put lights and statues of Buddha in, but it's so beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Gorgeous, smooth outside with holes in it. And here they've built into the rock and made like a beautiful, beautiful alcove with a statue of Buddha. And same again. Reclining Buddha with a golden cloak wrapped around it. Oh, it is beautiful with a nice golden light. And there you get a great perspective of the big cavernous cave. And like I say, hopefully, keep our fingers crossed, 
get that beam of light coming down into the cave. And I did read online that that happens between about nine o'clock and 12 o'clock and the earlier the better. It's about nine o'clock now, so it should happen at any point because it is sunny today. So we should get it. But I guess it depends on the time of year, right? I will keep looking around and wait for it because that, I mean, the photos look good, but photos always look good. Let's see how it looks in reality. Now, if I've got this right and I've read it right, this gateway, this archway from the main chamber into a smaller chamber, or is it smaller? That's a good point. Anyway, the gateway in between the two chambers was built by King Rama IV. That's what I've read, so it must be true, right, if it's on the internet. Not the most impressive, but quite cool. I think it was King Rama IV who built it. And yeah, this leads into another chamber, so let's walk through there and see what's in there. Oh, wow. You can hear bats in the background. This one is again beautiful, a large chamber and another hole or sinkhole to the sky above, but it looks like the rock has fallen down and settled on the floor. That's very pretty. What I quite like about these places is you have, the, well, it's not cold, but the dark cavern area beneath. And when you have the holes into the sky, you can see the blue sky, but the trees, the trees which grow around it and take advantage of it. And here you have the roots weeping down the rock, looking for water, comes all the way down into the cave. That's very pretty. And then you have white cheddi and uh, statues of Buddha around as well. It's a little bit hard to show you in this light, but this cave is stuffed with white stalactites, the ones that come down from the top of the cave. And it is very beautiful, but the light is just a little bit dim for them to look good on the camera. Oh man, this place goes on. I didn't realize it was going to be this big. Beautifully lit with these rods of orange light it really adds something to the ambience in the cave. And it's not scary for those of you who think caves are scary. Oh look, you can see the pillars here where the stalactite from the top has met the stalagmite from the bottom. Oh, these are beautiful. Almost a little bit like mushrooms, but... So beautiful. And I presume this bit is man-made, but you have a beautiful archway that you can walk through from one area into the next. Oh, and now the smell of incense and looks like more shrines within the cave and steps all the way up. Ah, oh, does it go all the way up and out? Yeah, I think that goes up and out of the cave. You can't go out there anyway, but it does go up and out of the cave. But you need to go back into the main part of the cave. But it's so hot in these caves, I expected it to be a bit cooler than the outside, but so far all the caves we go into are absolutely boiling. I said this before in uh, Ratchaburi, when we were in the cave there, you can see why people time ago thought these places or still think these places. But when the first people came here, you could see why the people thought these places were spiritual and the connection with nature as well, very, very important. But when you walk around these places, the feeling, the energy, the beauty, surely it can be only made by someone who's greater than us is what they would think, not necessarily what I would think, but <laughs> I can understand why. Right, that's probably it for the cave actually. It's not a huge place, maybe only 10 minutes walking around and just taking in the beauty of it. But the column of light hasn't appeared yet, so I'll hang around 10, 15 more minutes. It does look like it's getting brighter and brighter up there, but I'll hang around and see, fingers crossed, like I said, see if it comes down. Unfortunately, the beam of light didn't happen. Well, 
it will happen, but I don't have the time to wait for it. Waited an hour and a half for it in the cave. And as nice as it is, we need to carry on and continue to the palm sugar orchard. And I'll save that for the next video. See you in the next one, guys. Thank you.